Hey everyone, welcome into my home. Uh, thank you for welcoming me into your home, into your living room, uh, which at least I trust everyone is in your living room. If you are driving, then you should put your phone down and stop watching this immediately. Um, but speaking of which, I uh, want to say I hope you're all safe, you're all well, you're taking the necessary precautions to take care of yourself and your neighbors and everyone around you. I hope that you're communicating uh, with people, especially as you have needs, especially if you are sick, uh, so that we can all take care of each other in this uh, bit of a crazy time. Um, this is very awkward for me. I'm just talking into my computer right now and I can't see you. Uh, it's very difficult to speak if uh, I don't see your faces, but uh, this is a way um, it felt important to be able to communicate uh, with you guys personally. Uh, it has been a absolutely crazy couple weeks. Um, it's been hard to remember what day it is uh, as things have developed so quickly over the last couple days. So in light of all that uncertainty, um, and since this would be a time we would ordinarily see each other to be able to worship this morning, thought it'd be a good way to at least get a personal word in. Um, uh, to be able to communicate with you guys. I want to reiterate uh, the announcements we sent out in the email. The session spent a lot of time talking uh, together, keeping up with the news. Ella Mobley has been very, very helpful, um, as well as many others of you. Um, been working very hard, keeping you know, up to date as fast as we can in order to make sure everyone is safe and we make the right decisions. Um, as things stand now, as we said, that we are going to plan to not have worship uh, today, obviously, and at least through next week. And we will keep uh, info coming as things develop. We will communicate with you in the best way that we can. Um, and in addition to Sunday worship, then that means all activities at the Avon we're going to suspend for the time being, including the moms group, um, um, the, any of the youth classes. I know the women's Bible study is going to be suspended for the time being. Uh, we have said that we're going to allow community groups to continue to meet and leave that up to the discretion of the leaders and the groups. We just ask that everybody would be very wise about participating in those if you show any symptoms at all to please not come but also again to please uh, let people know that you are not going to be be there and why um, we will continue to pray for you guys and ask you will continue to pray for each other as well um, if you are unsure about if something is meeting or not the best thing to do is just email those in charge and ask and even if they can't find out even if they don't know then they can surely find out uh, for you um, I wanted to give, since this is Sunday morning, um, a time we would worship, just a little bit of a word of encouragement um, to you guys this morning. Um, if you got a Bible, you can open up to the book of 1 Peter. Uh, 1 Peter uh, is a wonderful book that talks about living out a public faith, particularly in a time of crisis. Um, I'm going to give a few flyovers of just a few points here. Very briefly, um, just to set the context that First Peter is written to a group of people who are experiencing persecution, um, and they're particularly surprised by this. If you look at chapter 4, verses 12, then they're exhorted to, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you. And this, um, you know, is particularly about persecution of believers for their faith. But I think we can make a parallel application um, to Peter's words here that um, apply to us as well as we are seeking to live out also in a time that is somewhat surprising. Um, it is a public crisis and it is a kind of crisis that um, involves every single one of us, um, not just believers. Uh, but it reminds us that we exist in the middle of a broader community. And we have both encouragement in that place, and we also have a responsibility at the same time. Um, so that's two things I want to draw out here, that we both get a word of great encouragement to believers, even though they are in a time of great hardship, um, and then also a word of instru instruction, which we'll look at in a second. So if you'll first look at chapter 1, um, I'll read verses 3 through 9. 
Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has called us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you are being grieved by various trials, so that the test of genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. So what is Peter saying to his audience and then what he's saying to us is essentially no matter what is going on on the outside, um, how crazy it, it may be, um, um, whether that be a situation of persecution like they are facing or any other kind of trial, uh, we could also make a application to here that we as believers have something that is very, very precious. Um, that is in a sense that we don't have something, but we are had by God, that we are his possession, um, that he has called us to himself. Uh, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection, that he is actually guarding every single one of us uh, through faith. Uh, and this doesn't change, uh, even though our situation changes. Our awareness of that fact changes, especially with our situation, but the fact that God is keeping his people and guarding them and keeping them safe, that never changes. And what he gives every one of us is something that is, um, is something that cannot be taken away. It can't be taken away by any person. It can't be taken away by any situation. Um, it is undefiled. It is unperishable. It is safe. Uh, it is being kept. And these things that we face, what they add up to in the long run, uh, what God is working through them and what he is, um, the place that they fit in the grander story, though it might be, not be revealed at this time, it is going to be revealed one day. Everything will be shown in its place and everything is going to be shown, whatever we face, to how it adds up to bringing Christ's you know, glory in the end. Uh, his great salvation out of mercy that he has worked for us. So that's, in summary, what, it, what that means, says it just again, is that we have a great reassurance no matter what happens, that whatever the news says, um, whatever uncertainty we may face, that what we have in Jesus, that is his possession of us, um, is safe. We are precious to him, and that cannot change. And he repeats this again and again throughout the letter, reassuring us of um, um, his possession of us. He says this particularly in 2.9, that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own possessions, that we may proclaim the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness and into um, his marvelous light. And that transitions into the second point that I wanted to make here, that not only do we have a great reassurance of hope uh, because of Jesus, despite what we face, we also have a great calling, uh, being priesthood, to our communities, that we are not called to just sequester ourselves off and take what is ours um, and leave the rest to whatever uh, may come, but that we are actually called to, um, to serve, uh, to participate with those who are around us. Again, in 2.11, it goes on, he says, Beloved, this is as an application of what he's been saying. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh that wage war against your souls. And this would be any kind of self-centeredness. Uh, this would be any kind of rivalry. This would be any kind of bettering ourselves at the expense of anybody else. Um, it could be inciting ridicule of any, any party, any political position, or anything like that. But we would abstain from those things, but... This is important to keep your conduct among the Gentiles. Uh, so that is, has a public sense to it that is among Gentiles, among the broader community of where we have been placed, honorable. So that no matter what might be said of how Christians have conducted their, themselves during this time of crisis, that anyone might be able to see your good deeds 
and to glorify God uh, because of that. And this theme of good deeds, he's going to come, come back to again and again and again, uh, several times. I encourage you to read the whole letter um, and to take note of how many times he says good deeds. Um, and one of them in particular that he's going to address specifically in 2 verses 13 through 16 is this idea of submission to authorities. Uh, that we would actually pay attention to local governments, uh, that we would pay attention to the bigger governments, the agencies of them, and that we would do whatever we can to participate with them to make their job not a burden, uh, but to help. Um, that we would be seen as a community um, as actually doing good in any way we can, not only for ourselves, but to those um, to surrounding us. Uh, this could involve anything. There's an easy application of that for us, uh, that we would take heed of any public warnings we're giving in this time, um, that we would take heed of how we conduct ourselves um, and taking precautions uh, to show that we are thinking of the well-being of not only ourselves, but even the weakest members of our broader community, that we would um, seek in any way we can to play an integral part of how we um, take care of those around us, whether that be us helping to slow down the spread of this virus, whether we personally are worried about it or not, or um, in any other situation that is not um, specifically about, you know, the COVID-19 that we're facing now. And this is in summary that we have a great gift we've been given in our salvation. Uh, we, we are possessions of God's own. He is keeping he is weaving a story together with us and through us to bring glory to Christ. He is keeping us safe. Um, he is, um, has something that is far more precious um, than anything that we can have right now. He's keeping it unfading, undefiled, and untouchable. But with that, that we actually have a great calling um, on behalf of our neighbors, um, and that is to do good in any way we can. And that those good need, good deeds um, would be known such that anything might be able to be said of how we conducted ourselves in this crisis. It would be clear um, that we have behaved ourselves out of love uh, with a purpose to share the kind of love that Christ has given for us where he gave up his own rights and came for us while we were weak. And when we undertake this calling, we're actually, um, we are participating with Christ and we are making his sacrifice known. So that is something uh, I wanted to give you that we could all meditate on together um, as we are in this time. Um, and now I just want to, uh, maybe we can uh, put some feet on that. And I would like to spend some time praying with you now. I would encourage you as you are watching this to pray along with me as I pray for you. Um, and we'll go before the Lord in prayer for our neighbors and our community. So let's do that. Dear Father, we do humbly come before your throne in thankfulness for your mercies that you have poured out on us. Um, that even though, even if our bodies fail, uh, we have been given something that cannot be taken away. And in that we have cause for great joy um, and that we can take great comfort in. But we do want to undertake this calling that you have given us to serve our neighbors well, to conduct ourselves in the public sphere um, in a way that you have asked us uh, to do. Uh, we want to do that uh, first uh, in prayer by looking to your throne of grace that you would help. We pray particularly that you would protect those who are most weak in our midst, that you would keep them from being sick. We pray for those that who are sick, um, that they would uh, recover well. We pray for the family members of those who are in our church uh, that we might be worried about, um, who are in an at-risk demographic, that you would also do the same for them to protect, protect them and preserve their health. Father, we pray for all of the hospital workers um, and all care workers and all coordinated efforts um, that are being undertaken in order to serve our community, that you would encourage them. We pray that uh, people of our community would participate um, and would be encouraging themselves, that we would all um, have a strong sense that we don't just belong to ourselves, we belong to each other. And we're all in this together. We all have a part to play. Father, there are many needs we have even in our own congregation. Um, 
and many uncertainties that are not just about getting sick. Um, there are anxieties about how our lives are going to be affected um, with quarantines going forward. There are issues of childcare um, that um, some people are going to have to um, have a hard time sorting out with schools closing and that kind of thing, um, and many other things that we, um, we don't know about. But that just illustrates the kind of uncertainty we're in that we're trying to navigate. Father, would you give us comfort? Uh, would you give us joy? Uh, would you give us peace? And in that, that we would be prompted to love uh, those around us. That we, we would not just stop and, and hold on to what we have been given, but that we would share it abundantly uh, and freely with those around us. Father, there are also many needs we have that are, are not related to COVID-19 at all, and those don't stop even in this time period. Uh, so we pray that you would, um, you would take care of them. Father, I pray, continue to pray for all of the leaders and uh, the session and the deacons and the staff of our church and the other churches in our area that you would give us wisdom because we clearly uh, cannot see uh, what you see um, and we are dependent on you. We pray for our governments um, and that you would give them wisdom and that they would honor the people that you have given under their care. Father, we love you and trust you. And we put everything that's about to happen um, going forward into your hands. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you again for tuning in to this. Uh, again, we will keep you updated on what is, what is going to happen going forward um, over email or any other way we can. Uh, I want to invite you after this um, to tune in to Covenant Presbyterian Church's live stream service. If uh, you would like to follow a service in full, um, and also use what to use whatever resources um, we email out for worship uh, for use in your homes as well. Uh, for now, I'll give you an elbow bump from here. Um, I hope to see you guys uh, as soon as possible. Take care.